The bell jar model is a great way to demonstrate how the diaphragm contracts and relaxes resulting in the lungs inflating and deflating. The model does have some limitations and we will go over those in this video. The tube entering the bell jar represents the trachea, which then splits into the bronchi. The balloons represent the lungs. The bell jar casing represents the rib cage. The rubber sheet represents the diaphragm. The key thing is to realize the bell jar is airtight. And so the amount of air in that space is always the same. The air particles in that jar are pressing not only on the bell jar walls, but also the balloons themselves. So, when we push the rubber band up to mimic the diaphragm relaxing and doming upwards, it decreases the volume of the bell jar and increases the air pressure. The air particles have less space to move around in, so they exert more pressure on the outside of the balloon, causing them to deflate. When we pull down on the rubber sheet, mimicking the diaphragm contracting and flattening, we increase the volume of the bell jar cavity and decrease the pressure. The air particles have more space to move around, so they exert less force on the outside of the balloons. The atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure in the glass jar and inside the balloons, so air rushes into the balloons. The limitations of the model are as follows. The bell jar is rigid, unlike the rib cage. We can't simulate the intercostal muscles contracting and relaxing, causing the rib cage to move up and outwards and downwards and inwards. The diaphragm flattens when it contracts, but in the model, we must pull the rubber sheet down quite a lot. The bell jar is full of air, but in reality, the thoracic cavity is filled with bodily fluids. The bell jar has large spaces around the balloons, but again, in reality, the space around the lungs is small in the thoracic cavity. In the next lesson, we will look at the structure and the adaptations of the alveoli.